Reads video. I am Becky. I'm Lindy. I'm Lauren. And today we are going to do our bookish pet peeves. All the things that piss us off about books. I'm going to start off with no series numbers on the cover of the book. It pisses me off. Clockwork Prince says book two right here. That's okay. You can do that. All of Rick Riordan's books say Book two, like on the spine, which is even better because you could just look at the spine and look for what book you're looking for. Not all book series are Harry Potter where we automatically know which order all the books are in. Lindy and I were at somebody's house the other day and I had to point out to her that this person is not a reader and had the books on her shelf for grandkids. And I was like, her Harry Potter books are out of order. And if I didn't have to climb like on a bench to get up to her <laughs> shelf, I literally would have just wandered over and been like, <laughs> and reorganize them. I personally feel like publishers sometimes do it because they're hoping you're gonna find the book at the store, accidentally buy it, and then also have to go back and buy the real book that you're like, oh, I need book two, and you accidentally go buy book three, and you're like, crap, now I have to buy another one, and you're gonna spend more money. More than likely, I'm just not gonna buy the book until I figure it out. I hate love triangles. Even if they're done well, I'm just so tired of seeing them <laughs> that I do not want to hear two guys mentioned or two girls mentioned. But no. that's the thing is it's almost never two girls. It is almost always yep. two guys. And here's why, here's one of the reasons I despise it. I feel that it's condescending. I feel that they're like, you know what girls are gonna like? They're gonna read this female main character and they're gonna imagine themselves at her and what girl doesn't wanna feel pretty and special? Let's give her two boys fighting over her and then mm -hmm. she'll be like, of course two boys would fight over you. They'd fight over me too. If only I could find the right boys. Yeah. I see it and I immediately am like, oh, of course. It's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's in love but with Tiffany. <laughs> I wouldn't want anyone, like, it would be awful to have two people fighting over you and making your life awful. And it would be awful yeah. to be in love with somebody and be like, what? And have that person be like, well, dude, like, I can't decide between you and Tiffany. Because everybody loves Tiffany. That's what I'm going to call her now. That girl that everyone falls in love with, her name is Tiffany. <laughs> Sorry if her name is Tiffany. Sorry. <laughs> Unless everyone is in love with you and then, you know, like, rock it out, Tiff. Ate it in the book, this is a plot thing, when a girl falls in love with a guy who has been a complete jerk to her since the beginning of the yeah, story. Yeah, but yeah. he's been... That's an unhealthy relationship. Yeah, but he's been a jerk. <laughs> why? Because of reasons. <laughs> this is why I couldn't get on board with Will and Tessa the first time I read through the series. He's being a jerk and I don't care what his reasons are. Like, he's a big fat jerk. I don't care. Well, and I don't like it when, um, you know... She's trying not to fall for this guy who's just gorgeous, but he has the tragic backstory, so he's a total douche. Like, yeah. no. His backstory ooh, does not ooh. excuse his behavior. The Iron King. I read the first book in that series, and I thought it was really interesting that somewhere there's, like, so the Iron Fae that, like, can touch iron and are made of iron, and so they're going to destroy all the other Fae because, like, they can touch iron. Cool premise, but... I liked Robbie slash Puck, and the other guy shows up, and I guess because he's from Unseely co Court and his mom's a jerk, he's like a giant D-bag to her the entire time, and then by the end of the book, Robbie's dropped out of the picture for a while. They're on their way to go fight danger, and it's like, no, I'm going to stop and make out with him first. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, because I know you're a jerk and you've only been nice to me, like, twice, but reasons. You're pretty. Really, it comes down to, like, you're pretty, and you're prettier than the other boy. So I'm going to take this crappy love triangle and jump with the and jerk. Make it crappier. Make it crappier. Yeah. I just right. hate that. That happens in almost every book, and I hate it. One of mine is discussions. Like, either discussions that don't happen when they need to happen. Stop! Wait, I need to tell you this really important thing, but somebody else walked in the room, and I'm not just going to pull you to the side and be like, no, hang on a second, this is, like, real important. I'm in love with you. Or, like, your dad is sleeping with the maid, or whatever it is. But no, so, like, we're going to have this weird, awkward misunderstanding for the whole book. Or it's like, help, help, we're running from danger, but stop, I need to confess something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with you. We need to have a heart to heart. Now is the time. That's why that one character in the middle of Fallen Kingdoms got stabbed in the chest because they stopped to have a conversation and make out rather than escaping. One of my pet peeves is I don't know if you can even see, but when they're uneven on the end, there's probably a name for that, and I don't know what it is. But um, they're really pretty to look at, but really hard to use because every time you get to a short page and you want to turn the page, you can't get traction on it. You can only grab a long page. When you have a series 
where it's like short, short, tall. Like, come on, make them all the same height. Please. There's no reason for it that There's I can fathom. No the only thing I can figure with these is that most of the YAs were being printed this tall. Oh, no, like Scholastic, Scholastic, Hyperion. Okay. okay, so sometimes they change publishers, and then sometimes the issue is all of the standard YA size was this size, and then they started printing them bigger and charging a dollar more for them, and so then everything else is now a taller size. And I'm going to throw in there, I don't have any on my shelves. When they change the cover of the books and the theme of the book covers halfway through the series. And the enemy series, I'm looking at you because the covers were really good and I like the new covers, but the covers were really good. And then it was like halfway through the series, they were like, eh, we're just gonna change all of them. If you're a collector and like you're buying them all hardcover, do you go back and buy them all hardcover? Like I know people that read the Shatter Me series got really mad because they're like, they didn't like the first cover and they redid the covers for the next two, but then they didn't release the first one in hardcover in the new cover. And like, it's, it's annoying. Stop it, publishers. And that is when the cover is amazing and the book is like mediocre. Because <sighs> you're like, oh, this is so gorgeous, you know? You're like, and you open how it up pretty. And you read it and you're like, eh. I mean, or, or the premise on the back of the book, you're like, that sounds amazing. Yes, yes. You're like, my father murdered my baby sister before my very eyes and then demons ate the body. And you're like, that sounds creepy and I want to read that. And then it's like, scares are like, also, love triangles. <laughs> and I'd like to point out that most of the time on this next one, I can see it coming. For example, in Fallen Kingdoms, the writing in it isn't terrible, but the character, I, I really love the world building. There's a lot I like in that book, but there's a lot I don't like in that book. I was really getting annoyed with one of the characters, and she was being whiny, and I hate describing female characters as whiny. It's such a cop-out, but she was Miss Whiny Pants. And I'll leave my link down below to my review of that book because, again, like, there's a lot I like about it, but a lot that I didn't like as well. And they're in the middle of the scene, and then the phrase, she let out the breath she didn't know she was holding. <laughs> and the words out of my mouth were, of course she did. <laughs> Because it's just, look. In stressful situations, we forget how to breathe. G girl, <laughs> and boys do it too, but characters and young adult forget how to breathe for all kinds of reasons. The boy they like is standing there. They're running away from danger. <laughs> it's a Tuesday. Like, <laughs> I didn't notice it that much until somebody on a booktube video pointed it out. And then it was like, it's all I can see. It's the crack yeah. in the glass. And it immediately makes me think less of the writing when it's said. It's always in the same words too. That's the thing. Yes. Is it's like the same line over and over again. She let out the breath she didn't know she was holding or she hadn't realized she was holding. And I yeah. hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Oh, the other one that goes with that. He smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're laughing because they know because it's in yes, there all yes. the time. I mean, it totally makes sense. We've all met those people where they smile at you and you're like, you don't really mean it. And I get what they're saying, like, so-and-so is normally a happy person, and they're smiling, but you can tell, like, it's a forced smile, and I get that. But say it some way else. Say not, it another way. Not like, the he way it's said in every book, ever. He grinned, but it didn't read in his eyes. Stephanie Perkins, who wrote Anna and the French Kiss, part of what really attracted me to her writing, even though I didn't like the OTP in the first book, um, was, like, she found unique ways to say something. The main character, instead of just saying, like, oh, she's so pretty, she should smile more, she should utilize the corners of her mouth more. And I was like, that's such a unique way to say the same thing that we've heard a thousand times in movies and TV shows and books. And like, find a new way to say it. I don't know how well this translates on the camera, but this is one of my other problems. There is a standard size for most young adult paperbacks and most young adult hardcovers. And that changes from time to time, and that's fine. But why are Ali Condi's books all taller than the other books? Like, even her new book that's not a part of the series. They're all taller, so they don't fit all the way. All of these can get pushed back, but her books don't fit. Neither do the clockwork books. None of none of the infertile devices fit on my shelf. Harry Potter can get away with it because J.K. Rowling is a goddess. If you're not J.K. Rowling, and I know the authors have no control over this whatsoever, but dear publishers, please stop making books that don't fit properly on my shelves. Because when my husband built the shelf for me, we made sure it fit your standard young adult books. They don't fit and I don't like it. So those are all of the ones that we can think of right now, although we rant about many more things at other times. <laughs> um, so what are your biggest pet peeves? Let us know down below. Um, let us know if you, if what you think about our pet peeves, and we'll also leave links down below to where you can find T-Rex reads both on our blog and on social media, on Twitter, as well as on Instagram, and we will see you next week.